She's a Grammy-nominated singer, writer, and musician whose music is being used as therapy around the world. Here with more on her unique sound, new album, and thoughts on the healing powers of music is Melody Gardot. Welcome. Hi, nice to meet you. Girl, I like the look. <laughs> She's styling for us. Certainly. Yeah, from head to toe. Yes. It's Paris. Yeah. Came from Paris. Paris. All right. Well, Très bien. What's that? Uh, très bien. Ah, uh, très bien. Oh, Wait. very nice. Très right. bien. I like it. <laughs> that is a little New York <laughs> swagger on right. a little Mississippi <laughs> to me. We're just in Mississippi. That sounded almost like it came from there. That's funny. Oh, gosh. All right, so we have to get to the new album, Currency of Man. That's an mm -hmm. interesting title. What's behind the story behind it, and what can we expect? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think you should have any expectations or exceptions in whatever you do. Like, mm -hmm. you just, you go forward you know, knowing that you're going to go into something without worrying about those things. So I'm not going to tell you what you need to think, but the music is talking about what's going on now, like what's happening in life right now. And the title is a kind of a poetic gesture to say, you know, what is the value of a man, not man, not saying man and woman, but man like mankind. Mm -hmm. Because I came back from many travels, I came back to LA, back to the States, and not to sound like an old woman, like back in my day, but I came, <laughs> I came and I landed in this city that had been so familiar to me and then looked completely different. And we were forgetting our brothers and our neighbors, and I was watching people kind of falling down in a city that's rising up. So mm. these are stories about people that are really beautiful that maybe in society's grand view we tend to forget, but it's little stories that talk about kind of every walk of life and how those people are very important and we're all connected. Now Preacher Man is about Emmett Till, is that correct? Preacher Man is about Emmett Till and it also ties in to history now, like where we are now, mm -hmm. how I think we should continue to be conscious and forward thinking. You know, Emmett's story is so strong and there are places that I go to in the world and people don't know his story. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know his story until a few years years ago and I find that funny because I went to school, I learned my history, I spent extra days in the library because it was free education mm -hmm. and his name never came up. Wow. Why? And he was fundamental in the civil rights movement. I mean, his, his story and the strength of his mother, of Mamie and, you know, uh, of his grandmother I think is unbelievable and I really connected to that because he was an only child and I'm an only child and he felt like he could have been my son too. And I'm from Philadelphia, so I don't believe in the idea of race or racism. I think it's ridiculous. There's one race, there's a human race. Mm -hmm. And that it still exists sometimes, people with these ideas that you can judge someone for this color of their skin. To me, uh, it's nonsense. Mm -hmm. So I made this video about uh, Emmett as a kind of a tribute to his life and his legacy uh, so that people could see it and remember and maybe just try to wake up and see that we don't need to continue doing things like that. It's yeah. ridiculous, you know? Yeah, it's a power, powerful video. A lot of your music is very powerful and it's been described as a unique mix of jazz, R&B, and blues. But how would you classify your sound? I don't go for that. I don't go for genre. I mm -hmm. just write music. And on this record, we've got horns. We've got a lot of improvisation because all the music is cut live. Mm -hmm. There's organ, bass, drums, sax, trumpet, bone, barry. Um, and some great orchestra too, but it's very cinematic. It tells a story in the music and in the lyrics, and it's something that I hope, you know, it's kind of like sound painting. You go, you listen to the lyrics and all the things that are happening around it, you can feel. So there's good groove too, because mm -hmm. you, you have to move. You're, if your body's not moving when you're listening to music, something's wrong. That's Definitely. very true. Who were your musical influences growing up? Oh, I don't know. Um, my mother, my family, they're very musical. You know, they all play different instruments, and so everything from the accordion to the trumpet to guitar to, like, just putting on little plays in the house. Mm -hmm. They're a very creative family, so music was always what happened on long drives and things. My yeah. mom taught me how to harmonize just by teaching me how to sing basic things and then sing along with me. Wow. It was normal. Yeah. So you sang because it was fun. It's yeah. just a pastime, mm -hmm. just like you dance because it's fun. Yeah, well, I know you're a huge proponent of music therapy. Mm -hmm. How has music therapy helped you overcome a past a very terrible accident? You know, um, my situation coming into music was not uh, typical. Mm -hmm. I didn't wake up one day and go, I want to be on stage and I want to have my name in the paper. It was the contrary. In fact, somebody had to really kind of drag me onto the stage at first. Yeah. Um, I was 19, I was hit by a car, and I had a, a number of different things happen to me, but most severe was a brain injury where my, my brain was kind of fried from the impact. And I wasn't speaking, 
and uh, I wasn't walking and so many other things, not to go too long or too morbid, but I met a doctor who said that I should try to do music therapy and like a child, because you really do revert to being a child when your brain is, is broken. Mm -hmm. you, you have this limited functioning. I didn't remember anything. Um, you start to speak for the first time like a little kid. So the sounds you make are phonetic, like mm. apata, pasina, like just very, almost Swahili coming out, yeah. you know? And then slowly you begin to speak clearly and I did that over a guitar. And one thing led to another and I could see how much that, that helped me. It made communication possible. And with some help from the Swedish Postcode Lottery, which is a, a big company there in Sweden, they gave us a generous donation to start a program. And I was still in my 20s. It's something I thought I would do when I was like 60. <laughs> but music is the message. And I think um, that's something even James Brown had said before he split. You know, music is the message. And, and when you have the opportunity to help someone, whether it's with your own history or like Emmett's history, or the, the therapy of music, you're no good to anybody if you don't share it and pass yeah. it on. Yeah. So that's why we did this and we built this little university together and it's growing and expanding. Yeah. And well, we're glad you're using yeah. your music and others mm. to heal people around the world. Thank that's you cool. so much for yes. sharing your message with us. Oh, thank you for having thank me. You. And the new album's out June 2nd, right? Yep. All right, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. We'll pick it up. Nice to meet you. All right, and you're watching Rise Entertainment 360. Uh, cool. Music is important to me.